I don't know. I'd get up to like 500 a day sometimes. I'm just, wow. I'm just doing the Can you imagine that? 500 a day. Some of you guys can't even watch 500 steps without taking it without complaining. So, um, yeah, we're going to talk today about Mr. Jorge Masvidal. So, for you guys that don't know, um, Jorge Masvidal is actually a UFC fighter. He's been fighting in MMA for um, oh, quite some quite some time now, and this guy is like the the um, epitome of uh, just persistence. If you look at his uh, UFC record, right? Um, you know, he, he really started, uh, making a come up when he started fighting. He fought Benson Henderson when Benson Henderson was still in UFC. And if you go to his, um, Wikipedia, you can see, see Toby Amata is here when he lost via, uh, triangle choke. That was in May 1st, 2009. So 10 years ago, he was being humiliated because he lost or he, he was part of submission of the year. But he was the guy getting choked out. So that's pretty fucking, you know, not not cool. But now if you take a look at it, you know, literally 10 years later, he um, is winning fastest knockout in UFC history. He really started turning it around right here around uh, Benson Henderson. You know, he lost a split decision, split decision loss. Then he won. And then he just started. He knocked these two guys out. He lost a split decision to um, Maya and then Thompson. And then he knocked out Darren Till. Then he got the flying KO. And then he uh, won the BMF title recently at UFC 244 by defeating Nate Diaz. Um, the guy is just on a roll right now. And uh, once you have this kind of momentum, I mean, it's just so hard to stop. The last time I saw this type of momentum was when Conor McGregor was in the UFC. And, um, you know, that is the only time I actually saw that. Let's go back to this this part right here, though. Take a look at this. Talk to them about how important is talent, then training, and then the competition. Because all those things take place in your space, right? Yeah. Well, man, it applies to real life. So... Does anybody know what that watch is right there? That's uh, I think that's $120,000 Patek Philippe. I'm pretty sure. This is the gold one. 120 Gs on his uh, wrist right there. It's a pretty nice watch, not gonna lie. So, so much, you know, it's just, it's just if you want it, man, you know? I mean, I remember sleeping in the back of my car and looking up and like, man, I'm gonna get out of here and this is the way I'm gonna do it no matter what. And just putting everything aside, I could have been at a nightclub or I could have been doing other things, but all I cared about was the gym and making it to the gym, just punching in that clock. It was just a matter of time before that kid that was 15, 16 year old and me, it was just a matter of time and putting in that time. So to, I tell the same thing to anybody, no matter what your field is, if you really want it that bad, you'll, you'll make it happen. You know, if you could put aside the distractions, the Instagram, TV, some charity event that there's going to be girls there. And you're like, no, I'm going to go to sleep early today, wake uh -huh. up and do what I got to do. It just plans out over a period of time, I think, you know. So see what he's talking about there is what they talk about in the compound effect. The, Keep punching in that clock. But, but I mean, everybody that's fighting at your level, they all got to want it. They all want it. And that's, they all got to train. And they're all comfortable with being uncomfortable. So uh -huh. you got to learn to be. That's a big one, too. That, that actually reflected with me with this year when he said um, you got to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. That is so f true. If you want any type of success, man. Um, you know, this is this is the psychological aspect I study in people who are. Uh, successful like this guy obviously Jorge Masvidal is on the up and up right now and it's a reflection of his mindset that's why he's able to ascend to such good heights here we all know about it this is how like people get you know you get caught in a dry spell or you slowly uh, get out of shape is you get comfortable right you maybe have three or four girlfriends and they all pretty much you know they you got them wrapped around your finger and they're they're um you know they're worshiping the ground you work on. They're, they walk on. They're cooking for you. They're cleaning for you. They're taking care of you, right? And um, you know, you start slipping at the gym a little bit, or you don't. Maybe you don't start working as hard as you usually are because you're you're kind of you know you got comfortable, right? A lot of success can make you guys comfortable. I know because that's what I experienced this year. 
Uh, success is, is a great um, test as well. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. Be an animal, you know, you got to learn to swim. I wasn't a good swimmer. I learned how to swim because I wow. heard a rumor that might make me half percent more cardio. Let's do it, you know. Uh -huh. I submerged myself in swimming for like three, four years. I'm an all right swimmer now. I wasn't the best runner. Same thing. I just, I heard rumors, man. If I become a better runner, I become a better fighter. Let's do it. Where's the track and field team? Where's the, where's the coach? Wow. And, and so on and so on and so on. I just. You see how he doesn't make any excuses? He just, somebody tells him to do this. He doesn't sit there and second guess himself. He doesn't sit there and need a chart or a graph or some analytical device to, you know, scan all ratios of probabilities that are going to be the outcome. He doesn't need any of that. Shit. He's just like, all right, so I need to swim better. So where do we go learn how to swim? Let's go to this school here, right? Got to run better. Okay, let's learn from the best runners. No excuses. You just find out what needs to be done. He does it. It's really – guys, success really is that simple. 95% uh, of it is you're just like in your own head and you're making it a bigger deal than you than you think it is. And really it boils down to you just don't believe that you can pull it off. It, it all comes down to self-confidence. Um, so you got to keep that in mind. Getting in as many reps as I can so I'm like disgusted by the technique. I don't want to do it anymore. But I know the only way – like that knee, I repped that knee out throughout my whole career thousands of times but in particularly for for that individual i don't know i'd get up to like 500 a day sometimes i'm just, wow. just doing the did you imagine that 500 a day some of you guys can't even watch 500 steps without taking it without complaining not all of you i'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying you know i'm not saying but some of you guys you know who you are okay this guy would do a Flying knee drill 500 times a day. I don't even care if you have to do 500 push-ups a day. Okay? That is still incredible hard work ethic and discipline and talent. And he was doing, like I said, he's doing up to 500 a day. So, you know, maybe other days he only did like 50 or 100 or even 30 or something. Hell, even 30 a day is incredible. And uh, he was doing them 500 a day. When I heard that, I couldn't believe it. But it gets far more interesting. Let's keep listening. The move, man. Just doing same the move, move over and over. Same move. Just same move. Different scenarios. Different yeah. Setup. Physically, now are you are you in your mind? You kind running you, it out. You kind of you you go into autopilot. You know, mm -hmm. when, when especially when when the workload is so heavy that if you start to think like, gosh, I got 500 reps, you might break. You know, so I just get into this autopilot to where my coach is like, all right, you hit the 500 next, and. You yeah, you know, that's one thing I noticed too with exercising is your mind will always quit before your body does. Your mind is the first one to start being out if you have a weak mind. But he, he obviously has a very strong mind because he can just turn it off and, and just gut through it. And that's what I've realized too. Like when you have your best workouts is when you just turn off your brain, you know, focus on the form, get your perfect form reps in, and then just be done with the workout. Just Know what you have to do, write it down as you do it, and move on. So I just wanted to point out a couple of those things that I noticed that were quite honestly very um, very good kind of pillars of masculinity to kind of focus on. Um, and it, it definitely ties into like game, dude. I'm telling you guys, m like momentum with your mouthpiece and talking to girls, it is so f real. You need momentum. So for you guys that are telling me like, you know, I'm going to go monk mode three months and like read books and blah, blah, blah about chicks. No, you're not, dude. You're going to go in there. You're going to become socially retarded because you isolate yourself because your social skills are like your gym skills. If you don't use your social skills, they will go away. Same thing if like you don't go to the gym, your muscles will disappear. That's just the way life is. And uh, it's the same thing with your social skills. So keep that in mind because once you have the momentum building, I mean, social momentum is powerful, whether it be in the business world, whether it be in nightclub game, whether it be day game, whatever you're in the zone doing it. Like sometimes, you know, when you're like when you're a salesman, you're just on fire. You're like n n nobody can tell you no and you're just knocking deal after deal after deal. Same thing like if you're dating a bunch of girls, it's just like girl after girl after girl is coming for you and it's no problem.